Good afternoon Brindley Heath, it's Mrs Lesniewski here. It's really strange to be back again doing assemblies virtually, but hopefully it's only for a really short time. Today's assembly is about something that I think is really important. I wanted to talk to you about World Mental Health Day. Has anyone heard of this before? What do you think it might be about? I'm going to ask your teachers to pause the video now and give you a chance to talk. So now I want us to think, what is World Mental Health Day? And this is a day that's held on the 10th of October every year, and it's a day dedicated to raising awareness of mental health issues. It's a day when people can get together to show support and awareness for people who suffer with their mental health, and they can unite in their efforts to improve the mental health of people all around the world. So, what is mental health? Does anyone know what mental health means? Talk to your partners, see what you've heard or what you know. And your teachers can pause this now for a moment. Okay, so mental health refers to our emotional and social well-being, as you can see from the slide. And actually, mental health problems can affect one in roughly one in every ten children and young people. This can include things like depression, anxiety and anger and other emotional difficulties. And these things affect how people handle stress. They affect how they relate and talk and communicate with other people and how they make different choices. There are lots of other mental health issues and everyone diagnosed deals with them differently. If someone thinks they may be suffering from mental health issues, then they need to see a doctor so that they can get a proper diagnosis and receive some proper help and support. There are many, many types of mental health problems. And I want to talk to you specifically about three today. Anger, depression and anxiety. Anger. Well, that's a feeling that we all feel at different times. It's part of being human and it's a normal healthy emotion. Anger can, at times, be a positive emotion as it can motivate us to change something that angers us or makes us feel down. However, anger can become a problem when it gets out of control and harms yourself, other people or things around you. Depression is another mental health problem and this is where you are low in mood and that lasts for a long time. It can affect someone's everyday life. Many people feel low in spirits sometimes in their lives, but when these feelings begin to interfere with your life and they don't go away after a few weeks, it could be a sign of depression. Anxiety. This is when we feel tense, worried or afraid. But anxiety is a normal and natural human response when we feel under threat. Most people feel anxious at times, I do when I see snakes, and this is especially when we're coping with stressful situations or changes. But anxiety can become a problem if it impacts on your ability to live your life as you want to. For example, if these feelings last for a very long time, they make it hard for you to do things that you normally enjoy doing. Mental well-being. How can we look after our own mental well-being? Well, life can be really busy and stressful at times, therefore it's really important to take action and to look after our own mental well-being. And there are lots of things we can do to help this. I want your teachers now to pause the video and you can take a moment to talk to your partner about some of the things you think you might be able to do. So I came up with a number of different ways that we can help our, to promote our own positive mental well-being. One of these is to connect with other people, to talk to people. Basically, talking about feelings is a great way to deal with any concerns you might have. Having a chat sometimes makes a problem seem less terrible. There's a really famous phrase that says, a problem shared is a problem halved. And often when you talk to somebody about your problems, you can try and find some solutions together. Another way you can promote your own positive mental well-being is by being active taking regular exercise. And this is really important for physical health and mental health. 
evidence actually shows that doing physical activity can help people with mild depression and it can even protect against anxiety. It changes the balance of chemicals in the brain and it helps promote feelings of positivity. Another way we can help to promote positive mental health is by taking notice, by being mindful. Actually, taking time out of our busy lives to reflect on our thoughts and feelings is really important. Stepping back and taking a breath can really help us to clarify our own understanding and to make us feel more relaxed and calm. Another way we can promote positive mental well-being is by learning new things. Keeping our brain stimulated is a brilliant way to keep them developing and to keep our mood positive. Learning new things creates neural pathways in your brain and again they promote those chemicals that help us to stay in a positive frame of mind. Another thing that we can do is to give, to give time, to help other people, to do work for others that will make them happy because that again promotes a feeling of happiness, of joy and positivity. And another thing that we can do is eating well. By having a balanced diet that's full of nutritious things such as fruit and vegetables, it gives us a healthy body and a healthy mind. And it does this because the eating a nutrient rich diet helps to pre prevent against anxiety and depression. So what to do if you're worried about someone? The first step you can do is to be a good friend. That can be many things, being kind, inviting someone to play with you, going and having a chat, flashing a smile at them. All of these things show that you care and you're there for a person. That's what being a good friend is all about. Another thing you can do is listen. If someone wants to talk, listen. Give them your full attention and let them know that you're happy to listen to whatever it is they have to say. And finally, telling an adult. If you're really worried about someone and you think they need help, find an adult to tell. Find someone you trust. Because often that adult can help to signpost some specific help for that person. I want to finish our assembly today and I want you to take a minute to relax and to think about what you've learned about mental health during this session. So I'm going to ask you all to close your eyes. I'd like you to breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. For one minute I'd like you to focus on one thing that you're grateful for, something that makes you happy, that you're glad is in your life. I'm going to ask the teacher to pause the video for a moment. Okay, now open your eyes. I hope we've learnt lots today and I hope we've got lots to take forward. Thank you for listening, Brindley.